We believe at one point it may not have looked too different from us. It had clouds in its atmosphere and oceans mixed in with its land. Perhaps it even had weather systems like we do here on Earth. There is even a possibility that like us, it once had life roaming its surface. However, this was a long time ago, and today the planet and its landscape look very different. How long ago, you might be wondering? It is at least billions of years. As we see it today, it resembles more of a desert or barren wasteland, a husk even of its former self. This does not mean it is any less interesting though, and in some ways, it might even be more interesting. We will come back to this later in the video. One of the most explored bodies in our solar system, it is the only planet that we have sent rovers to. So far, we have sent a total of seven. I go over them in one of my latest videos about the Perseverance rover. These, along with many other missions, have helped us to learn many things about this planet. Even with this though, there is still so much we don't know. Today, we are here to tell the story of our neighboring red planet, Mars. How did Mars lose things like its water and atmosphere? It was most likely stripped away over time by radiation and solar winds coming from the sun. In fact, this would happen to us a lot more here on Earth if we did not have a magnetic field protecting us. A magnetic field for a planet is created by something known as a dynamo, which is a conversion of mechanical energy into electromagnetic energy through induction. What creates this effect is the combination of a planet's rotation and it possessing a hot, molten, or liquid core with metals moving through it. So for Mars, the most likely first step it experienced was the cooling of its core, which we believe happened roughly 4 billion years ago. With this, the metals would be no longer moving, like there wouldn't be a liquid medium for them to turn in, and it would then result in the death of the planet's dynamo, taking the magnetic field with it. This would leave the atmosphere riddled by the onslaught of solar wind, and as the planet lost more of its atmosphere, it also lost its ability to protect its oceans, causing them to evaporate and dry up over time. Another part of what may have caused Mars to lose its water and atmosphere is its lower mass and as such lower gravity. You see, Mars is about half the size of Earth, with a radius of 3,390 kilometers or 2,106 miles. Along with this, let's go over some other cool facts about the planet. It is a bit farther away from the sun than we are. It orbits at an average distance of 228 million kilometers, which is around one and a half astronomical units. For those who may not know, an astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance between the Earth and the sun. Mars completes one rotation every 24.6 hours, which as you might guess, is very similar to one rotation of ours here on Earth, which lasts 23.9 hours. Martian days are known as sols, which is short for solar day. A year on Mars lasts 669.6 sols, which is the same as 687 Earth days. So the Martian year is not quite two times as long as Earth's year. Its tilt is similar to ours as well, being 25 degrees. Earth's is like 23 degrees, right around there. So like Earth, Mars does have distinct seasons. However, because its year is longer, 
This means its seasons are also longer as well. And the seasons on Mars are not as evenly spread out as the ones here on Earth. Instead, they vary in length due to its elliptical or egg-shaped orbit around the Sun. Let's have some examples here. On Mars, spring in its northern hemisphere, which is autumn in the southern, is the longest season, lasting 194 sols. The shortest is the reverse of this, so when it's autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern, it is 142 sols. Northern winter and southern summer is 154 sols, and its reverse is 178 sols. Mars has moons of its own as well. Granted, they are rather small and maybe even a little bit pathetic. Small enough, in fact, that they might be captured asteroids and not moons that were formed like how ours was here on Earth. Because they don't have enough mass to round themselves, they are shaped like Idaho potatoes. <laughs> the first one is Phobos, which is the innermost and larger of the moons. It is heavily cratered and has deep grooves on its surface. It is slowly moving towards Mars, like falling into it, and in about 50 million years, it will crash into the planet if it does not break apart first. There is a chance this event will create rings for Mars as well. So picture it, right? We'd have ringed Saturn, and there's also a chance we'd have a ringed Mars. Although you and I, we're not gonna be around to see that. The second moon is Deimos. It is about half the size of Phobos and is two and a half times farther away. It is also oddly shaped and is covered in loose dirt. This leads it to being smoother than its counterpart Phobos. At the start of the video, we talked about how the surface of Mars may once have been but what is it like today? For starters, while it looks red, once we are at the surface, we find there to be a myriad of colors. We see browns, golds, and tans. You might be curious then where the overall red hue comes from. After all, if we look at it through like a telescope, the red color is pretty visible and evident to us. This is due to the iron that can be found in the rocks. It has oxidized or rusted over time, and much of it has also turned into dust, which then gets kicked up into the atmosphere. And from a distance, this makes the planet to appear to be mostly red. Now I had mentioned earlier as well that Mars is around half the diameter of Earth, but curiously enough, its surface has nearly the same area as Earth's dry land. Of this land on Mars, I would wager it has some of our solar system's most interesting topographical features. In fact, let's go over a couple of them now. Here, we have a large canyon system known as Valles Marineris. I probably butchered that. It is long enough to stretch from California to New York, pretty much the length of the United States, spanning more than 3,000 miles or 4,800 kilometers. At its widest point, it is 200 miles across or 320 kilometers, and it reaches depths as far as 4.3 miles down, which is wow. To give us a point of comparison to here on Earth, it is about 10 times the size of the Grand Canyon, so it's an even grander canyon, if you will. The second example I would like to give today is Olympus Mons, which is the largest volcano in our solar system. It is huge, coming in at around 72,000 feet tall, which is three times taller than Mount Everest with a base nearly the size of Arizona at 375 miles wide. By this point in time, Mars has also lost most of its atmosphere, 
which we kind of talked about earlier, making it rather thin. It is made up mostly of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon gases. Looking up from the surface, the sky would appear mostly red, but that is due to that suspended oxidized dust we talked about earlier. What's left of its atmosphere does not offer much protection either, right? Like there really is barely anything there. So it is often impacted by things like asteroids, meteorites, and comets. The temperature here undergoes large swings too, reaching as high as 20 degrees Celsius, or for people like me, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and dropping as low as negative 153 degrees Celsius, or negative 225 degrees Fahrenheit. The low temperatures here especially have the capacity of damaging the electronics on things we send there like rovers. So, they are often equipped with heaters that help them maintain a certain temperature at night when the temperature really dips. Anything solar powered must also watch out for occasional winds that will create big dust storms on Mars. Because in many of these cases, it can take months for the dust to settle. So anything solar powered really does run a serious risk of just completely losing power and shutting down during this time frame. Having lost its magnetosphere as well, all that remains of it are really just highly magnetized areas, which are what indicate to us it even had a magnetosphere in the past to begin with. I find Mars to be a rather interesting and fascinating planet, right? Because in the past, it would it very possibly was like Earth. So I, I do believe that there are things we can learn by studying its transition from how it was before to how it is now. And things like that really make me curious to just continue to learn all we can about and from it. And you know, as one of the most, if not the most explored planet in our solar system outside of Earth, I believe we have a lot of potential there. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to learn more about one of the rovers we've sent to the planet Mars, then please check out my video on Perseverance right here. Of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, things like that really help me out. Leave a comment below if you want to talk or have questions. I'd love to see you down there. And as always, let's all step outside tonight and look towards the stars.